White House senior advisor and President Trump's daughter Ivanka Trump earned a total of $3.9 million from her stake in the Trump International Hotel in D.C., according to new financial disclosure forms. President Trump told reporters Friday that he wanted to give clemency to more people treated unfairly by the legal system, particularly cases involving people like Alice Johnson, who he released from a life sentence for drug dealing at the request of Kim Kardashian West. Alexander Ovechkin and Evgeny Kuznetsov of the Washington Capitals are bringing the Stanley Cup to their home country of Russia for a visit with Russian President Vladimir Putin, according to a new report. As President Trump prepares to meet with North Korea's ruler Kim Jong-un in Singapore on Tuesday, all eyes are on North Korea. President Trump said hours ahead of his historic meeting with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un that the U.S. will know soon whether or not a deal with Pyongyang on denuclearization is possible. China is gaining influence over European and American media outlets through manipulation of information and foreign institutions, a bipartisan group of senators warned Monday. President Trump should not expect to see a decline in the number of illegal immigrants being apprehended at the southwest border until early fall, despite attempts by the Departments of Homeland Security and Justice to reduce rising levels of border crossings, a Trump administration official said Monday. A top communication staffer, Stephen Chung, has left the White House, according to a new report. President Trump will give his first interview after his historic meeting with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un to Fox News host Sean Hannity, the cable news network said Monday. Over the weekend, just for a few hours, I agreed with President Trump on trade policies. He insisted on, no tariffs, no barriers, that's the way it should be, and no subsidies. And that is absolutely the way it should be. Allow producers, whoever they may be and wherever they're from, to compete for our dollars by stating our desires as best they can. In that manner, we get more of our desires stated at the lowest possible cost. This is what the whole economic game is supposed to be about. White House Director of Legislative Affairs Mark Short split with President Trump's trade advisor Peter Navarro on Monday by saying he would not have criticized Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau so harshly, and that Navarro's comment do not reflect the White House position. Amid backlash from companies like Amazon and Starbucks, the Seattle government officials who backed a business tax to pay for homeless services earlier this year said they would move to repeal it. Former President Bill Clinton said it was a grievous mistake for former Sen. Al Franken, D. Min, to resign last year amid mounting sexual misconduct allegations, while comparing that situation to his affair with Monica Lewinsky two decades ago. Musician Kid Rock is slated to campaign for John James, a candidate for the Republican Senate not in Michigan, on Tuesday in a Detroit suburb. I disagree with President Trump's trade war ambitions, his public insults of Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and his call for Russia to be readmitted to the G7. But it is ludicrous to claim that Trump is shredding the Western liberal order. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis said Monday he does not believe a reduction in U.S. troops in South Korea is on the negotiating table as part of President Trump's summit with Kim Jong-un.